Okay, so here's a, another little video, and the title of this video is Let's Make the Black Palm Be a Black Palm. <coughs> so why shouldn't he be? He deserves to be a, back, a black palm. Okay, so again, I'm just going to go back to the, the very starting point, so the code. And as we can see here, we say if piece name that equals white palm. And we already know we want to make another piece move. We simply say if piece name dot equals, and again I'm going to make the the black queen move. So I just say if piece name dot equals black queen valid move is equal to true. So, <coughs> excuse me, then I save that and I go back out and I recompile my chess project and then I run it, which is a nice way to iteratively develop. Okay, so whenever you make a change, you should save it, compile it, run it, and test whatever, what it is you are trying to do. So now I should have the pawns are moving like they should, and I can move my black queen wherever I want but I can't move my white pawn or my black pawn so <coughs> at this stage this black pawn is not allowed to move so let's change that so I jump I'm gonna jump back to the code when I go back to the code here I'm gonna say else if uh, the piece name dot equals dot equals and I'm gonna just simply say black Oh, that's not how you spell uh, black palm. Fatal move is equal to true. So again, <coughs> when we recompile, and this time when I start off, I can move my black palms to any square at all. Okay? Obviously, this isn't great at the moment but at least we can move our black pawns like we can move our black queen. So <coughs> the first restriction I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I can move my pawn either one square or two squares on its first movement. Okay and that's the first logic that we're going to put in. Okay so whenever I want to change the logic I've got a statement here that says valid move is equal to true. So <coughs> to be able to develop this I just need to simply delete that and now add in some logic. And I say if start y equals 6, in other words, if I'm at the start position, else valid move is equal to the false, valid move is equal to, to true. So essentially what I'm saying here is very simple, right? I'm saying if the black pawn is in its starting position, move it, you're allowed to move it. If it's not in its starting position, you're not allowed to move it. And again, when I recompile and I run it, I should be able to move these pawns, which I, which I can. I can kind of move them wherever I want. But then when I try to move it again, I'm actually not in a position to move it. So I shouldn't move. So it's allow me to move the pawn once. Now there's no restrictions around the movement, but once I make that initial move, I can't move it. Okay? And that's what this logic is saying here is if I'm on the starting position or start y <coughs> excuse the, the cough and I have a bit of a cough. Start y is the coordinates where the pawn is initially starting or where the label is starting off. And if it's in has a y value of six it means that it's in the second row on the bottom and i'm allowed making any movement here at all okay <laughs> so now what we want to think about now is we want to say okay so let's think about this let's think about this logically right so let's work with english yeah so you say if the pawn is making its first movement okay that's where we are now, right? So the pawn uh, can either move one square 
or two squares. Okay, and this is a very special case. This was brought into speed chess up, okay? So <coughs> how do we do that, yeah? Well, the pawn can either move one or two squares, okay. So if we think about that, well, I'm gonna scroll up here a little bit. And we have a variable here called Y movement. So that sounds to me like, so let's say if we can either move one or two squares, yeah, this is in, in the Y direction. And we can say as long as we are moving up, up the board, yeah? Okay, so we should be able to move back down. Um, and also, there is no movement. No movement in the x in the x direction. Okay, so this sounds like a, <coughs> a very simple a simple case. So we can just say. If y, yeah, so if y movement equals one, we say or y movement equals two, then I'm gonna go and start y would have to be greater than landing y just so we're moving up the board and the x movement would be equal to zero. So we're not changing anything in the x direction. Okay, <coughs> so we look at those dot conditions and we've really got four components. Either we're moving one or two squares, we're moving up the board um, and We're not moving at all in the x direction. Okay, and we can say, look, if that is the case, yeah, we say valid move is equal to true. Okay, and let's just move him in just so I don't go totally crazy trying to view brackets. So now when we save and we run him again, we should have get to, we get to a stage now where essentially what we're saying if we have a little look at the code again we say if the y movement is equal to one square or the y movement is equal to two and we're moving up the board and the x movement is equal to zero so let's try that okay so i'm going to try a couple of cases here and we can see if i move in one square this should work we work that movement from there to there is one square in a y direction we're moving up the board and we're not actually moving in the next direction at all. So if I was to take this piece here and move them up and over one square, I'm going up in one square in the y and one square in the x direction. So this shouldn't be allowed. And see there, so the pawn has been simply returned back. So it's an invalid move. I should be able to move this square, this pawn two squares. And if I move them up two squares, I'm going to let go, and he should be able to make that move. So we can either move one square or two squares, which we can. <coughs> so this is great news, okay? This is absolutely brilliant. Now, I also want to be able to take a piece. So if I move up one square or over here, I should be able to move in this diagonal direction as long as there's a piece here in the way. And that's what we need to be able to do, okay? So we're gonna program it that I can move here, I can move in this diagonal if <coughs> and only if it's a one square in the Y and there's a piece present in this square. So we're gonna add this little functionality in. So <coughs> when we think about that logically, we need to go down here and we need to say, look, if we can put this in as an else if, we say else if, the y movement is equal to 1 
and the start y is greater than the landing y and the x movement is equal to 1. Okay? So as long as we are moving up the board, we're moving one the y and one in the x. If we, we if we move the same distance in y as we move the same distance in x, it means that we're traversing along a diagonal. <coughs> so we have the diagonal movement, yeah? So what we're simply going to say is the valid move is equal to true. And now what we need to do is we need to go back, we need to recompile and run it. So now <coughs> the last time we ran this we weren't able to move in a diagonal. So now we should be able to make this movement. Okay? So we can. We can do this diagonal movement, right? And after making our first move, we can't move the black pawn anywhere. Okay? But we can also move up one, we can move up two, we can't move up three, and we can move in our little diagonal movements. Okay, great. But we can only move, a pawn can only move in a diagonal if it is taking a piece. Okay, great. So let's just make that happen, yeah? So I go down to the valid move is equal to true again, and I just get rid of that. So I have a condition, I don't want to make it a blank condition that I can do this whenever I want to do it. So the very simple thing, if I look at the at the code here, I have a method here called piece present. And if I call piece present, <coughs> well then I should be able to get an answer to whether or not there's a piece present in the way. So I say if piece if piece present at e dot get x. So e dot get x gives me the coordinates. Um, of where the mouse is actually being let go because I'm in the mouse release function. So I say if piece present at e.getx and e.gety valid move is equal to true. So we move there's no piece present so <coughs> I can't make the movement now. So I'm doing the check and I'm seeing, or am I doing the check? Maybe I've just broken it, right? So I've just written, if there's a piece present, whatever, you're not allowed to make the move. Okay, let's test it. So I'm gonna put a piece in the way. I can move my black queen anywhere. So now, <coughs> if, if the piece present method works, um, I should be able to move here because there is a piece present. And as you can see, I can take the piece. Okay, now, I shouldn't be able to do there because I've just moved up one in the y, but over one, two in the x, and I can't. But we all know that chess in chess you cannot take your own piece. So I can take an enemy piece, but I shouldn't be able to take my own piece. Okay, <coughs> so what does that actually mean? I shouldn't be able to take my own piece. Okay, well, the white pawn already looks after this, right? So. If I scroll down here, I can see there's some kind of function here called check white component. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for check white component. And I have a function here called check white component. I also have a function here called check black component, um, which I've... Okay. So we have, yeah, check black opponent. We take in some coordinates. We know there's a piece present, so there has to be a label sitting at that particular location on the board. I get the icon from the label. I cast it to a string, and I simply say, if the string contains white, um, the opponent is equal to true, else return um, false. So in other words, when I call check black opponent, it's going to be true if the string contains white. Okay, great, perfect. Um, now I need to go back down here.
So now what I need to do again is, so I don't want to make this blanket rule, valid move is equal to true if there's um, a piece present. So I can't take my own piece. So we need to say if check black opponent and e dot get x and e dot get y. Um, And we compile again and run. And then this time when I try to take the black queen, it doesn't allow me to take it. And I can hear you thinking maybe it doesn't work. Yeah, maybe it's all broken, but if I march this little pawn down, and then if I try to take him, I should be able to take the pawn because the white pawn is a black pawn's opponent. And I can take the black, I can take the white pawn. Okay, so <coughs> let's just recap a little bit, okay? So I can now move my pawn one square. I can now move it two squares. Um, but let's just think. So if I march this little pawn down here, can I jump over him? So I can jump over him. So the little error is there for that little black pawn. So as he's making that move, he needs to be able to check and make sure that the pawn cannot actually jump over that pawn. Okay? And this is on the first move. <coughs> and it's a very um, particular part of the first move. So we go in to where the black pawn is. We say, look, if the y movement is equal to 1 or the y movement is equal to 2 and the start is, is um, start y is greater than the landing y, we're moving up the board and the x move to 0. So in here, what we need to say is if the y movement is equal to 2, okay, so if the y movement is equal to 2, we want to be able to check something. So what we, we need to be able to check here, first of all, that there's if, um, and let me, let me think about this, all right? So when we want to move two squares, we need to make sure that we're not moving on top of another piece, okay? So let me just make this valid move here. Valid move is equal to true, just to, to demonstrate the issue here. Okay, so when we recompile and we run it. What we need to be able to do is, if I move this pawn here, so as we can see here, this pawn is now moving not one square, but two squares. And he should not be able to move there because the pawn is actually in the way. So what we need to say is very simple. Yeah. If not piece present at e dot get x and e dot get y and not piece present at e dot get x and e, e dot get y but this time <coughs> As y is moving up the board, we need to check the square just before it. So we need to go back down the board, plus 75. And 75 being the width of the, of the square and the height of the square. Okay. And I think the brackets are, are shaping up. But if they're not... The compiler will tell us and the compiler will help us fix them. Okay, <coughs> so now we're, we're moving the pawn two squares. We want to be able to make sure that there's no piece present on the square that we're landing, which is the if piece, if not piece present at the landing square of e.getx and e.gety. And also we need to make sure that there's no piece present on the, the same x coordinate 
and the square below the square that we're trying to land on. Okay. And now when we we have it running, so we need to we need to kill it. We compile and now we run it. And now we're looking here <coughs> and we can see right we want to march this pawn down again. And we can see that we don't want it to be able to land here now. So this should tell us that there is a piece present and we should have to jump back, which it does, which is cool. And now we move to where the white pawn is just in front of the black pawn. We shouldn't be able to jump over this pawn. Okay, where we can't now. So we're making sure that we're checking the square before the square um, that we're landing on if we're moving the pawn for two squares on its very first move. Okay, so this is this is shaping up to be really, really cool. And we can see here that is this is where we have the if y movement is equal to 2. And now here's the else. So this is where y movement is equal to 1. So now we simply need to, uh, it's probably just faster to rewrite it, if not piece present at e dot uh, get x and e dot get get y. Valid moves equal to true. <coughs> so now we've just added in the little bit of logic there. So now I need to think, right? So, okay, so now we're catering for where on the first move and we can move one or two squares. We can also take a piece. Um, and then we're making sure that we're not landing on a piece and we're only taking our enemy piece. So it sounds like we have most of the components there for the black pawn, okay? And if we jump down here, Um, yeah, so, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to see here. So, essentially, this is their code here for when the pawn is starting off moving in its initial state. So, <coughs> we also have to be able to say, well, look, if we're not in our initial state, yeah, we can move the pawn one square forward, right, or we can move them one to a diagonal, and if we move them one to a diagonal, we can't take our own piece and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So else, let me just see here. Okay. So <laughs> let's take a little look at this here. So we say else. Okay. What's this kind of movement here, right? So we have to just simply copy and paste the code we have above here. We say if y movement is equal to one or two, well, we can't move a two anymore, yeah? Okay. So let's get rid of that. Now. We say if y movement is equal to 1, and the start y is greater than the land of y, so we're moving up the board, and the x movement is equal to 0. Brilliant, yeah? Okay. And now we can say if not piece present, um, and then that means that if not, if not piece present at the square that we're landing on, the valid move is equal to true. Okay. Now, <coughs> the alternative move to this move, yeah, is a very simple move, yeah, and it's a move that we already have, yeah. We simply say, um, and how I normally find the, the bracket is, that when I, if I start off here and if I try to copy down like this, yeah, the chances of me finding the right set of brackets are, is probably unlikely, right? If I'm really concentrating, yeah, I'll probably find it. If not, maybe not. So, but if I go down to the bottom bracket here, and if I can see that when I'm looking at this bracket here, where the, the cursor is, you can see the cursor moving, um, it's also highlighting that this bracket is its closing bracket, which gives me the else if condition. So if I start here, I can see that this is where, this is the line I want to get up to. Um, similarly, if I go, and if I go down to here, I can see that I'm actually now looking at the whole cold blank up to here. So if I just grab this part of the code and paste him down there, I'm now giving two conditions for my, for my pawn. So my pawn either makes its first movement, which is up here, this is the line here. This is 
where the pawn is making its first move. Okay, or I go down here and I say this this is where the pawn is making all subsequent moves, yeah. Okay. So and now we say <coughs> And we're either moving here or we're either moving one up the board or we're moving in a diagonal manner. Now we're going to save this and compile it and then fix the broken brackets. Oh, there's no broken brackets. Okay. So now what we should be able to do is we should be able to make our initial move and then we should be able to move up the board. As we're moving up the board, and we should be able to take our opponent pieces. Okay, so we now have a method now where we are able to move our black pawn in valid moves and only valid moves. The last thing that we need to do for our pawn is turn our pawn into something as we get up the board. So if we make it to the top row here, we should be able to turn that pawn into a queen. Um, and a queen simply for the purposes of air project he should be able to turn into anything at all but for for us we're just turning into a queen okay so what do we do well it's very simple we're we're in the else clause here so the else means he's after making his first move in the else here we've got two possibilities where we have valid moves equal to true here and valid move here is equal to true so all you need to do is to set some condition here that allows me to know that we're actually at the top of the board. So in other words, that the landing X is actually, or the landing Y is a zero. If the landing Y is a zero, we set a Boolean flag, and later on, just like the white pawn turns into a queen, you need to make sure the black um, pawn can turn into a queen. Okay, so that's, I'm gonna leave that last bit, but this is essentially how we've made the black pawn move, um, which should be relatively straightforward for you guys. I don't think there's anything missing, um, but I'm not looking at the workbook, so I'm not um, follow the workbook and have a look at the video. I think that's we've covered all the bases as, as far as I'm aware. If we haven't, let me know. Um, but um, I hope you enjoy coding up the black pond if it's not already done. Okay, bye bye.